So the first one was don't overcommit. Let them not, you know, they don't have to overcommit and be successful. The second one was testing in the sprint. And we'll talk more about that in a couple other follow-up sessions. Third is have a good communication software. Fourth is set the people up for success. Now we said about letting them not take on enough work. But now this is where the product owner or BA, depending on how your organization is set up, needs to contribute to the process. Scrum masters, you have to help push for this too. If your team's velocity is, let's just pick a number, 30, okay? And we talked about this in a previous episode. Don't introduce like 40 or 50 stories at sprint planning. Do not introduce 40 or 50 stories at a refinement session. And there's, we'll talk about all of them in the future. So many episodes to do. But do not show up in that room with more work than they're doing on the average velocity. If you do, it's your fault when they do not produce. Because now they got a pressure on them to say, management, my customer business, wants me to overproduce what I can do and they get anxiety and they fail and they fail because the product owner brings that stuff to the table and the scrum masters let that happen. I'm being harsh right now, but it's so darn true. Do not show up at sprint planning session. And I'm getting loud on this one and bring more story points to the job than they can handle. They will tell you when to add more story points. But you are the gatekeepers. You have to work with the team. You have to understand the team. That's the product owner's job. That's why they make a product owner part of the team. It's, 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 you, you got to do that, right? And I know I'm getting a little excited on it because sometimes I get passionate and people, oh, the product owner, I don't know the job. I don't pay attention. You're spending hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars of work to get your software coded. Take a interest in what's getting developed. Set your team up for success because when your team's successful, you're going to be successful and you're going to get promoted because your software just made millions of dollars for your company. So think about long term, right? Anyway, the fourth thing that I'll bring you is do not bring more points to the table at sprint planning than the average velocity the team can handle. Let the team ask you for more points but never show up with more than the hour. So if your team does 30, do not show up there with 40. Do not show up there with 32. Do not show up with 31. Show up with 30, and if you're really good and you know what you're doing, you show up with like 28 points. You actually go below the, the, the threshold. Let your team control their destiny. Let them, so come in at 28. Let them ask you for more. That way they are more committed because they ask for the work. You didn't push it to them. They asked you. I should do a whole blog post on, on how what the psychological advantage of letting them ask you for the work. Trust me, they will do more work if they're asking for the work than if you push it to them. Got it? All right. I'm going to let it go with that. I got a little... Crazy. So there is four things. Good morning. Good morning. It's 5 a.m. Master Scrum. Hope all is doing well. You can see it's light out. It's about 7.51. I have to write that down. 7.51. Late. You know what? If I don't do this at 5 a.m., it ain't going to happen until later because... My kids are loud. <laughs> anyway, uh, 